お待たせしましたお召し上がりくださいスフレレジェドグラースさあいただくとしましょう神の下持つ少女の皿を And in a souffle pancakes were just a flex on Megumi and Momo at the same time. That's all there is to it. Just a big old flex. Thank you to Clocked In for sponsoring this video. Find out more towards the end. The first thing you're really gonna need to do before we start is have some red beans soaked and ready to go. I soaked two cups worth of red beans for about two days before draining them and adding fresh water to it. We're gonna bring this to a boil and start simmering these just until they're really soft and mushy. As these things start to simmer, you do wanna skim off the top. It just makes it for a cleaner flavor. And after 45 minutes to an hour, you're gonna get some really, really smushy red beans that burn your fingers and just don't do that. Now go ahead and drain all of that excess liquid. And I like to drain my red beans for red bean paste for quite a while, probably about 20 minutes or so, just to make sure any excess water is removed. Now take those drained beans, put them back into your pot, and we're first going to add one and a quarter cups worth of granulated sugar. I know, I know, Edna uses brown sugar, but just hear me out. The granulated sugar actually helps break this down just a little bit better. And since I am going to be using dark brown sugar, I actually used some of the granulated sugar to cut it. I also use a potato masher to help kind of those beans break up just a little bit more so the sugars penetrate everything really thoroughly. And then blended this with a stick blender. You can use a stand-up blender, but because I wanted to keep everything in the pot, I did use a stick blender at first. Once you have it nice and creamy, we're gonna add in a full half cup of brown sugar. This is dark brown sugar, so you don't really need too much of it, but it's going to give it that molasses flavor. Now hit it with your stick blender or pop it into your regular blender once again, just until it's smooth, but you also wanna reduce this until it's a thicker paste. Once you have a nice thick paste, this is ready to cool down. Place this into a bowl to cool down completely, which I don't understand why I used a bowl. Paul, put this on something, but this is, this is better. Use the plate. We're gonna use the plate to cool this down overnight. We're gonna need this cold. Now for our first piece of garnish. This is actually going to be the black sesame twill. The black sesame twill seemed really interesting, but it's also really easy to make. We're only gonna need about one and a half tablespoons worth of melted butter and we are going to employ Chef Mike for that, followed by one tablespoon worth of sugar and two tablespoons of dark brown sugar because muscovado is actually very, very difficult to find in my area. Technically, muscovado and brown sugar are very, very similar, but if you're going to use them, just cut it with a little bit of regular granulated sugar. We're also gonna hit this with 50 grams worth of all-purpose flour once you get everything nice and mixed up. Make sure everything is totally combined and that way you don't have any weird pockets of butter or weird pockets of flour. After it's thoroughly mixed, we're actually gonna be putting in about one half teaspoon of black sesame. Get this completely folded together. It's kind of weird to kind of do it like this instead of in a stand mixer because it's such a small amount, but just spend some time kind of folding this all together. Once you have it all folded together, grab yourself a tablespoon worth of your batter and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want these to be as even as possible. Place this on a silicone lined mat. You can also use parchment paper on a sheet tray. That's gonna work just as well, but just make sure each one of your cookies is nice and even. Give these a little bit of a pat and throw this in the oven for about six minutes at 350 degrees. Keep an eye on it because they do brown very easily. After those six or so minutes, these are ready to go. Remove this from your sheet tray so they actually start cooling down a bit faster. And while they're still somewhat warm, we wanna cut these out with a cookie cutter. You can skip this part if you don't have a cookie cutter and just break them apart by hand. It's gonna look just as beautiful. But to keep it true, we actually cut these with just a two inch ring mold and set these on a paper towel so a lot of that excess fat leaches back into the towel. Oh, and save these for ice cream. Now we're gonna make the first part of our batter. And the first part of the batter is going to require strained Greek yogurt. For this, since I didn't really have a small strainer, I am just using a coffee filter like Edina did and placing this into a measuring cup held up with tape. I mean, what are you gonna do? I really love Siggy's Greek yogurt. It's some of my favorite. This is previously strained, but we are still going to strain it again. It isn't going to leach too much liquid though. I add about 90 grams worth of my strained yogurt into the coffee filter and we'll just let that sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now separate Separate your eggs. We're gonna be using three eggs total. Two egg yolks with three egg whites. So just make sure you have your egg whites and your, egg Paul, I said two egg yolks, bro. Come on, get this, just get your stuff together. You know, Keep, that's fine, we'll use that later. You have three egg whites in one bowl, two egg yolks in the other bowl. We're also gonna be adding in about 20 grams of half and half or really nice whole fat milk, 10 grams worth of vegetable oil. This is gonna be really important to give it a nice color. 
just a dash of vanilla for this and whisk this together just to break up those egg yolks. And then finally, we're going to be adding in about 40 grams worth of all purpose flour. Get this thoroughly mixed together so that way there's no weird clumps. You want this to be really smooth. This is gonna have a very, very thick consistency at first, but it's gonna be okay because we still have to add in our Greek yogurt. Once your yogurt is strained and it kind of looks spreadable, almost like cream cheese, this is ready to go. I only added in about 45 grams at first of my Greek yogurt just to see what the texture looked like. You want this to look like really, really thick pancake batter. So I left out my other half of my Greek yogurt and just ate it later. Now set that to the side and let's focus on our egg whites. I like to mix my egg whites at first just to get them nice and frothy before I add in just a pinch of cream of tartar. This is actually going to help stabilize the egg whites and you can use something like distilled vinegar as well, but just a small amount, no more than a quarter teaspoon. As you whip this together, add in 40 grams total worth of sugar in three parts. Continue to whip this and introduce more sugar until all of your sugar is introduced and you have these really beautiful stiff peaks with your meringue. You want to make sure you have stiff peaks, but do not over whip it because it will break the egg whites. So just pay attention to it. Now we have batter A and our egg whites. We're going to have to introduce these two together, but we also need to get our ring molds ready because as soon as we introduce these two batters together, this has to be cooked. Since I didn't have two of the same size ring molds for this, I went ahead and took my first ring mold, lined it with aluminum foil to make a second ring mold of about the same size and just kind of taped it off on the outside. Since we're not cooking with it on the outside, this is going to be totally fine. Don't worry about it too much. Once this is nice and taped off, I went ahead and trimmed the excess aluminum foil just so it's easier to work with. We don't really need all that extra aluminum foil. Now go ahead and bend the tops in just for a little bit of stability and then go ahead and start slowly, slowly, slowly sliding off that aluminum ring from your original ring mold. Now you have two of about the same size ring molds and this is gonna work out for a one-time use case. Alternatively, you can make two aluminum molds. So now we're gonna actually start folding in our egg whites into the first batter. First, we're gonna take one third of our egg whites and whip this into our batter. This is actually going to make that other batter a little bit lighter so the folding process is a little more gentle and you're not constantly folding too hard. And what I mean by folding, you wanna use a spatula and slowly start bringing the bottom and the sides back towards the middle. This is what a folding technique is. This causes a lot less of that air to escape the air pockets from the egg whites. This is how you make the souffle pancake. If you were to just whip this by hand, it does lose a lot of its body and texture and a lot of its egg white fluffiness. Once you have everything nice and folded, you do need to cook this immediately. I'm using this really, really cheap electric skillet that I have just because it works out really well for me, but you can use this over a low heat saute pan or skillet. Make sure that ring mold is really greased up so nothing sticks, otherwise it's just not gonna be good. We fill these up about three quarters of the way, but in hindsight, fill them up more than that because there's no baking soda in this. Add your second ring mold to your skillet or your pan and fill that up just the same height. Now these are super different than normal pancakes, so we do have to steam these. And to steam these, you just want a big lid or a bowl, or in this case, a really deep bottom sauce pot. We're also gonna be using a little bit of water to help steam this process. So after the first two or three minutes, add in just a touch of water to start steaming it. I ended up cooking the rest of that batter and you could see how nice and fluffy these were. And I gotta say on the first taste, so good. Now to help the steaming process, I ended up adding a little bit of boiled water to this stainless steel bowl, just so that way it had a little bit of a steaming kind of going on underneath it without me paying too much attention to it. After about 10 minutes or so, you're going to be able to move these around. The key really is to make sure that the egg whites are dry to the touch on top. If they are still wet and they're still really jiggly, do not flip these, it's going to collapse on you. Once you can flip these, flip them very gently, very gently, so that way they don't have too much of the air pockets collapse. We're only gonna cook these for an additional four to five minutes just to cook the bottom side. After those four to five minutes have steamed and cooked, these are ready to go and need to be plated up. I'm gonna leave these on that pan just to let them rest for just a second. Now grab your favorite plate and let's get ready to plate up. I already have some of my red bean paste out and ready to go and I ended up thinning this out with a little bit of hot water just because it was a little bit thick. Just so we have a nice paste to work with. Now grab your first pancake. You can choose whichever one you want, but I chose this one because it looked like it was actually a little bit taller than the other one. Peel off your aluminum foil and just make sure there's no, you know, aluminum anywhere. That's not good. Layer this with a nice layer of your Onco red bean paste. You can go as thick as you want on this, but I chose to do about a quarter inch thickness on here. Release your second pancake from the mold. That one stuck just a little bit, but we still got it out just as nice. Pretend you look like you know what you're doing, like you've worked in a restaurant before to get that beautiful angle on those pancakes. 
Dollop this with a little bit of fresh whipped cream. Hit this with just a few berries since I couldn't find edible flowers. It's gonna be fine. Raspberries are really good right now. And a little bit of fresh mint. Dust it with just a tiny amount of your powdered sugar. You don't wanna go overboard with powdered sugar. This is just to break up some of the brown color. And then finally, just a little bit of warm, beautiful, all natural maple syrup to finish. Edina's souffle de la chiquetequer. There it is guys. Edina's beautiful souffle doriaki pancakes. You know I love some souffle pancakes. I'm excited. Look at, look at them. Look at, look at these guys. Yes. So when I cut open to this, you can see all of the beautiful air pockets that are still there. Look at this, look at this bite. Oh yeah, baby. Wow. It tastes like, it tastes like having doriyaki because of that red bean paste. It's not overly sweet, which is really nice. Oh wait, oh no. I forgot the twill. You gotta be kidding me. Well, that was a fail, wasn't it? I got really excited and I forgot the twill, but we did make the twill. So here it is with the twill. But that thumbnail was gonna look so good. Let's try it with this twill now. The betrayal of the twill. Mmm, mm-hmm. The twill is really nice. It adds a nice little crunch to it too. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Let me know if you've ever had souffle pancakes before or what your favorite style of pancakes are. And a big thank you to Clocked In for sponsoring today's video. Clocked In is the app made for us in the industry. If you are looking for extra shifts and extra jobs, get Clocked In. You're gonna be able to find local work in your area and get paid directly through the app. No muss, no fuss, pull up the map and find extra shifts anywhere that's available to you. From front of the house or back of the house to delivery workers and everywhere in between, Clocked In is going to allow you to find those really awesome shifts. Download it from the links below for iOS and Android. My name is Chef PK. If you're getting the garnishes today, get subscribed and remember, Keep playing with your food. Man, I can't believe I forgot that garnish. What a fail town. Could you imagine if like we were in a restaurant, my sous chef would have been like, Paul, what are you, what are you trying to pull here, bro? Where's my garnish at? Oh,